Those are, those are both just fantastic readings, and one day I'm going to talk about them, but not today. I, I changed my mind. Uh, it's sort of a minister's prerogative that, they, that I can go off in any other direction that I wish. And so today I want to talk about a journey that happened a very, very long time ago when a man named Jonah was sent on a sacred mission to go to the people of Nineveh that God was mad at. And God was, it was told that God was going to destroy the city of Nineveh if they didn't change their ways. Now, Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't like the Ninevites. And so he decided he was going to hop on a ship and go the other way and avoid the whole city altogether. But God has God's plans and ha sent a great big uh, fish to swallow Jonah and spit him up on the shores of Nineveh. And this is what happened next. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah sent out, set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, three days' walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going one day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. Boy, that Jonah, good effort, eh? He had all of that time, he was sitting in the belly of a whale, he had the one day's walk all the way into Nineveh, and the best sermon he could come up with was 40 days more and God's going to destroy your city? That's not much effort. I think he would get a, a, a very low mark in some of my preaching classes that I took. It's a really good thing that the people of Nineveh had more sense than Jonah had preaching skill. Because this is how they responded. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd nor flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. You see, Nineveh's king was a good king and a very, very smart person. But there was another city that Jonah visited that wasn't written up in the Bible. In fact, I had never heard of this other city until I made it up yesterday. This other city that Jonah visited was called Nineveh. Jonah went there as well and gave the exact same sermon, but their king and their people responded very, very differently. The king of Nineveh was not a smart man, nor was he a good man. He cared nothing about God or the law or even his own people. The only thing that filled his mind was his own warped sense of power and wealth. And so when Jonah gave that sermon, while the king of Nineveh called in his advisors and the priests and checked everything out and assured, yes, this is what God is planning, we better act. The king of Nineveh also called in his advisors and his priests and everybody else to check on what Jonah said, but this king just executed everybody that didn't say exactly what he wanted to hear. Nineveh's king delivered a clear and honest answers to the people and advice so that people would become good 
and turn from their evil ways. He was honest with the people and he gave them sound advice. And when he didn't know the answer, he said, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to find out for you. And so the people were inspired because they felt that they had good leadership that was going to lead them through this troubled time. But the king of Nineveh, he just lied and spewed false rumors and conspiracy theories. And the lies were so blatant that the people panicked because they knew there's no one to lead us. It's every person for themselves. And it wasn't just the leadership that acted differently. Surrounding both cities was a great wall. And people used to post things on this wall to communicate with each other. They would post all sorts of things, sometimes silly things. Sometimes they would paint a picture of the meal they had just eaten and stick that on the wall. Sometimes it would be a painting of their kittens and they would put that up as well. In Nineveh, people knew to be very, very careful of what was posted on this wall, and they knew to always double-check to make sure the information that was put on there was good and accurate. They checked to see if there was a date put on the post so they would know if it was current. They knew to check for an author, because if there wasn't an author, there's a good chance it's false information. They also knew to double check things. Some people would put pictures of the high priest and a few words next to it, leading people to think that the high priest said that. But the people of Nineveh knew we got to check these sources. We got to make sure that this is actually what the high priest said before we take this as truth. The people of Nineveh, though, figured that if it was posted to the wall, it had to be true. And so they would not only read this and take it as fact, but they'd share it around and post it all over the wall. And eventually the entire wall was covered with terrible, terrible information that people believed. And the panic went on and on and people got more and more scared and they divided themselves up between us and them, the people that were to be blamed and, and us. And it was a true mess. The people of Nineveh figured that everything on that wall was correct. Now, Nineveh's king instructed the people to dress in sackcloth as a sign of their repentance. And they took clear and focused steps to better follow God's law. They obeyed all the nutritional and cleanliness laws. They washed their hands before they ate at every meal. They took care of each other and they spent time in prayer. Was it a big adjustment? Yes, it was. It was not easy, but they did it. And they took care of each other and themselves. In Nineveh, the ill-informed, panicked people started blaming each other. And then they even started blaming people from foreign lands. This is all their fault. So that they didn't have to take responsibility for their own way of living. They didn't have to take responsibility for the punishment that God was bringing. They did completely foolish and ridiculous things that just brought more suffering and destruction. At one point, there was a complete run in the whole city of Nineveh, and all of the papyrus was hoarded up. After a long time, and two very, very different responses from these two cities, the Bible tells us how God responded to the once wicked city of Nineveh. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said that he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The Bible does not tell us what befell the city of Nineveh, mostly because, again, I made it up. 
but also because there was no one left to tell the story. But did God punish them? Did God rain down fire on them and turn them into pillars of salt? No, God isn't like that. God has never, ever been like that. The punishment that befell Nineveh was their own making. It fell because the leaders and the people caused it to fall. They refused to take responsibility, to use the brains that God gave them, or take care of each other according to God's law. No city, no country, no empire can ever survive that kind of self-punishment for very long. Nineveh, on the other hand, learned and grew from their experience. <coughs> the fifth chapter of Jonah, which isn't found in the Bible, because again, I'm making that up as well, tells us that they saw their work together as a way of learning that they could accomplish so much more than they ever imagined they could. They got together and they took some very unpleasant steps to change their entire way of being, but they found that once they turned away from their evil ways and started embracing the law of God, things actually got really good. They were happier. They were more prosperous. They were more cohesive as a city. Everyone was safer. They found out that this was actually what they should have been doing all along. <coughs> they also learned that because they could come together and work this hard as a unit, they could start focusing on some of the other challenges they still had. Yeah, they still had poverty in the city and homelessness, but they could tackle that. They looked at some of the traditions that they had and how, uh, how horrible those traditions were to having their clean air and water, and they decided, we can fix that too. Was it going to be easy? No. But they spent 40 days in itchy, stinky sackcloth. 40 days of not eating and 40 days of prayer. If they could do that, they could do anything. Nineveh entered a very difficult time, but they saw them themselves to the other side because they knew that God was walking with them in their transformation. And they praised God for seeing them through this with the gifts of compassion, wisdom, and the law. <clears throat> 